and I am not in my normal location today. It is kind of a, it was kind of a dreary gray day, so I wanted to cozy up in front of my fireplace and film some videos for you guys. So I have my cozy clothes on, I have my glasses on, and my fireplace, and I am doing a video. And actually, now, finally, this is the third video I'm filming today, the sun has come out, and it actually has turned into a nicer day, except that now it's causing weird lighting and stuff. You can see all the stripes from the windows and there, especially the last video where it's really weird lighting on my face, but I think it's at least a little better now, but still kind of weird. But anyway, let's just get started on this. I'm just gonna try sitting here. I'm really excited about this video today because I am doing my first top five Wednesday. So I love these videos. The topics are always super fun and I love watching everyone's top five Wednesdays. And I've been wanting to do them for months and I never get around to filming them. So I am going to be doing today's top five Wednesday, which is top five red book covers. So I'm taking this to mean of all the red book covers I have, the top five books, not the top five most well-designed covers, but the of all the red book covers I have, my favorite with the story, with the actual book of the red book covers. So I have my top five red books here with me, and without further ado, let's get started. I have The Battle of the Labyrinth, the fourth book in the Percy Jackson series, and I read these books straight through, I marathoned them about almost five years ago. Almost five years ago, I marathoned through the, these books and I loved them. And yes, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this is about, but I love mythology and these books are super funny and fun. And I love how he integrates mythology and takes a fun spin on everything and I love them. Then I have The Crimson Crown. This is the fourth book in the Seven Realms series by Cinder William Shima. And I just read these at the beginning of October and I loved them. They are such good books. Uh, there are four books in the series. It is a high fantasy. And I guess I'll describe the first book. No, no. My dog's here and I don't want him to slow burn my books. Okay. The first book is called The Demon King and I really enjoyed them. Basically, in The Demon King, it follows a uh, reformed thief, Han Alistair, and the crown princess of the queendom, Raisa Anna Maria, and it, their stories are separate at first, and then they intertwine, and it is a adventurous story with lots of really cool magic, lots of cool settings. It is just an amazing high fantasy with great characters, and I loved it. The Crimson Crown. Then I have... Eldest by Christopher Paolini. This is in the Ed Inheritance series. It is the second book. The first book is Aragon. And in Aragon, a boy finds a dragon egg and then it's basically a really great fantasy story with dragons. And I loved these when they came out. And actually, I was super, super excited for when the third book in the series came out. It came out in the fall of 11th grade for me. And I had the voucher and everything to go, not this one, but the third one, this is the second. I had the voucher and everything. I pre-ordered it from the bookstore and on that day I was super excited to go and my mom wouldn't take me there. She wouldn't drive me and for two or three weeks she wouldn't take me, she wouldn't take me and then once she took my voucher when I was at school and she went and got the book and then took it home and hid it in the house somewhere where I couldn't find it and said, oh, like I got it so it wouldn't be wasted, but um, you can't have it. So I searched the house for weeks and I finally, finally found that book. But I was so scared that my mom would take it away from me if I started reading it that I put it on my shelf and I didn't read it. And then it became kind of a... Uh, a self-control thing for me, like how long can I go without reading Brissinger? And I still haven't read it. <laughs> so that was, let's see, that was over six years ago. So it's kind of pathetic. I haven't finished the series. All four books are written and I haven't finished it. But I've read this one 
two or three times, and it's really, really good. It's the second book in the series. So I really need to reread the first two books and then read the third and fourth book, which I also have. But yes, Eldest, the second book in the Inheritance series. Then I have Inkheart by Cornelia Funk. This is the first in the Inkheart trilogy, and it is such a wonderful book. It is a uh, kind of middle grade young adult, kind of middle grade-ish. It follows Maggie, and it's and her father is a bookbinder, and it is all about just it is the perfect book for people who love reading. The blurb says, you know, imagine it was possible to bring books to life. So her father can read from a book and things in the book come to life. When Maggie is young, her father is reading a book to her and her mother. This is before he knew he had this ability. And her mother gets sucked into the book and another character comes out of the book. So every time something gets read out of a book, something from our world disappears into the world of that book. So her mother disappeared into the book and so basically they're both distraught. This, this happened in the past. He has this ability but he doesn't like to use it so he almost never reads aloud. They're always trying to figure out how to get her mother back, who ended up in the book. But then some sinister things happen and the story goes from there. It is such a good series and it's just so, like there are quotes in here that just, she gets, she gets us book lovers, this author, she's a book lover too. Like there's one quote from in here. Like, I could probably quote it from memory. Like, oh, it just, I have to find it. Like, here's one quote from it. If you take a book with you on a journey, Mo had said, when he put the first in her box, an odd thing happens. The book begins collecting your memories. And forever after, you only have to open that book to be back where you first read it. It will all come in your mind with the very first words. The sights you saw in that place, what it smelled like, the ice cream you ate while you were reading it, Yes, books are like flypaper. Memories cling to the printed page better than anything else. Like, that is just one of the many wonderful, wonderful quotes that I absolutely love in this book about reading. And it's a very fun adventure. I'd say it's um, kind of middle grade, kind of young adult. And it's super fun and I love it. Then, finally, I have Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. This is the third book in the Grisha trilogy. And it is so good. I read it um, near the end of September, and it is like fantastic. So good. Like this series is amazing. The writing is absolutely gorgeous. The prose is gorgeous. The story is wonderful. It's a kick-ass female heroine. She is smart and snarky and super strong and awesome. And the, I love the supporting characters. I love the story. I love the writing. Everything about it is wonderful. And this book is so good. It is not a happy book. It is really like heart wrenching. Like when I finished the trilogy, I felt like my heart had been torn out and stamped upon and like I literally just, it was so emotionally draining throughout the series that I just, I actually sat and just kind of stared at the wall for over an hour after I finished this. In the middle of the night, I just like stared at the wall feeling all hollowed out and I like didn't know what to feel and I was happy and sad and it was it, like at the same time and it was just, th this, this, trilogy is so good. I absolutely loved it. If you don't know what the story is, it is a fan high fantasy with a kick-ass female lead. It is inspired by Russian cultural elements, but it is not Russia, and it takes place in a place called Ravka. And Alina is in the military with her closest childhood friend, Mal. They both grew up in the same orphanage together. And their regiments have to cross this really dark, scary place. Sorry, my dog is playing next to me. They have to cross this really dark place full of monsters in the middle of Ravka called the Fold or the Shadow Fold. And it is really dangerous to cross it, but they have to cross it to get to West Ravka. And when they are crossing the Fold, hundreds of monsters attack that normally travel in small packs, but there are hundreds of them and basically people are dying everywhere. 
her best friend is dying and she is standing over him and a monster is about to attack her and suddenly this blast of light goes everywhere and it turns out that it came from her. So the beginning of this book starts with that and she is whisked off to the capital to train to be a Grisha because she's the sun summoner which is very rare for a Grisha. So eventually she is going to have to try to figure out how to destroy the fold but then a ton of other things happen which further the story. This is so good. I highly, highly, highly recommend this series. The first book is Shadow and Bone. Alright guys, that was my first top five Wednesday and I am super, super excited to be participating in these. So we stack these up. <laughs> so these are my top five red book covers or top five red books. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought. If you have any recommendations for me, please let me know because I always love recommendations. And if you have any questions about any of these books, feel free to ask. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Also, if you do Top 5 Wednesdays and you have done this video, I would love to see yours. You can link your video down in the comments below, and I'd love to watch it. So thank you guys so much. Bye. Thank you.